Hi everyone, Anton here. Well, the Skyward Sword playthrough has come to an end, and uh, while I usually give my final thoughts in the playthrough itself, this time the game kind of segued into the credits too fast for me to say anything, so I just thought I'd put them in a separate video for a change. Now, there are going to be massive spoilers in this little sum up, so if you have not finished Skyward Sword yet, I would recommend you not watch the video. But then again, if you haven't played Skyward Sword, why would you be watching like a pseudo review of it? Anyway. It's not going to be too long, I'm going to try and ramble as little as possible, and I'm going to split up everything into its own section. Story, music, gameplay. So let's do this. Story-wise, not much to complain about. Um, I liked how ancient everything felt. Uh, I thought the story had a good tone. Uh, atmosphere, not as good as Majora's Mask, although very few Zelda games come close to the atmosphere of that game. Uh, but it was very charming overall. I enjoyed the origin of certain concepts uh, that have been seen in previous Zelda titles, such as the Master Sword. Uh, I liked how the Triforce came into play, you know, the origin of the Hero of Legend. Uh, I liked how they explained uh, why Ganondorf like, keeps coming back and whatnot. It was due to demise. You know, his hatred kept getting reincarnated through the ages, just like Link and Zelda keep getting reincarnated. I also like the explanation that Demise is pretty much responsible for all the evils in the world, or most of them anyway, like Varty and Bellum could possibly be reincarnations of Demise's hatred for Link and Zelda. That's quite interesting. Now, while the tone uh, is great, it kind of lets itself down pacing-wise, because uh, there is quite a bit of filler in the game. Uh, like going around, having to do all these objectives just to get into the next dungeon and whatnot, having to collect all the songs, go through the silent realms and whatnot. And while this does lend itself to you know setting up Link to be this gigantic hero, this monolithic figure of legend, it's kind of boring to sit through, especially when Fire is being all robotic and whatnot. And that kind of leads me into the next part of the story: the characters. Now, a lot of them are great. I really love how they handled Link and Zelda. Uh, Groose was a decent character by the end of the game. He kind of started out as a very cliched bully. Girahim uh, was kind of stuck in cliche as well at the beginning, but he became more sinister uh, as the game went on. I very much enjoyed how he was towards the end. The main problem character-wise with the game, without a doubt, is Fi. She is probably the worst sidekick in all of Zelda. Now, I found Midna to be actually quite obnoxious and a bit rude throughout Twilight Princess. Granted, she mellowed out towards the end of the game for reasons I'm not going to explain here. Uh, but at least she had a personality. Fi pretty much repeats back to you what you've already heard. Literally, someone could tell you uh, there is a secret over there in those trees, and then Fire will pop out and say, Master, there is a 95% chance that we should check those trees. We might find a secret. It's not really helpful as much as it is patronizing. And I know this is more linked to gameplay than anything, but even in cutscenes, she doesn't really have that much of a personality or any character until the end of the game. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just prefer sidekicks in Zelda that actually have personality. I think to this day, Ghost Zelda uh, from Spirit Tracks probably fits the bill in that department more than anything. So yeah, tone-wise, the story was great. Pacing, not so great. Character-wise, uh, not bad. Fi lets it down somewhat. Now, the music is actually a subject I brought up a lot during the playthrough. While there are some great tracks on the soundtrack, such as uh, the romance theme, Fi's theme, Song of the Hero, one of the boss battle themes and so on. Mainly where I think it lets itself down is the normal themes, you know, such as, uh, you know, just walking around Skyloft and so on, uh, the overworld themes, and the dungeon themes. I don't think there's anything really that memorable there. Uh, besides Ballad of the Goddess and Song of the Hero, the harp melodies are extremely forgettable. I think really where the music shines the most is not so much the melodies, but the composition. Going from MIDI to orchestral is probably one of the biggest advancements in the Zelda franchise for a long time, and that might seem kind of sad to look at it like that, but I think it's great. So 
Yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag, is the music of Skyward Sword. And that's really all I have to say about that. And finally, we come to the gameplay, and oh boy, this is kind of where Skyward Sword shits the bed somewhat. I'm going to start with the biggest offender in the gameplay department here, the controls. I don't really know what went wrong here. I mean, it seems like a great concept to be able to control your sword in any fashion you want, in any way you want, with the Wii Motion Plus accessory, and for the most part it works great. I slash upwards, Link slashes upwards. I slash to the side, Link follows suit. But sometimes when I slash sideways, it will do it diagonally. When I try and stab, nothing will happen. And I found myself having to recalibrate the controls so many times throughout the course of the playthrough. And I thought to myself, is this my problem? Am I just not playing right? But no, all my strikes were like dead on target. Uh, and I'll give you an example of where it doesn't work very well. Uh, the Deku Barbers, you know, the plants where you have to either slash up or sideways. When trying to do a horizontal slash, sometimes it will register as diagonal. And when you do a diagonal slash, you're not going to be able to kill a Deku Barber, and it's really frustrating. And a lot of the enemies in the game require you to be very precise with how you hit them, uh, like the Stalfosses, for example. And this is a problem that kind of runs through most, not all, but most of the other items in Link's Arsenal and Skyward Sword. The Beetle, for example, can be very janky to control at times. Uh, you may have seen during the playthrough, it was kind of juddering as it flew through the air. It was never able to like keep a straight line most of the time, tilting from left to right. I was holding the Wii Remote straight, and then I very slowly turned it left and right, and it's really not that fluid at all. So yeah, I just kept recalibrating and recalibrating. Sometimes it got so bad, it would just not calibrate at all. Like, for example, when I was fighting um, Girahim during the boss rush near the end of the game. It must have taken me, what, two to three minutes to get it working again. I know this isn't really the best example, but I think I actually enjoyed Twilight Princess's use of motion controls better towards the end. Granted, they were nowhere near as deep as what you'd get out of Motion Plus, but at least with them using the sensor bar, it had something to lock onto. Here it's all inside the Motion Plus, and if that fails, you're kind of buggered. But my main problem with the controls, other than the inconsistency, which is a term I'll bring up in the conclusion, is just the fact that a lot of the things Skyward Sword does doesn't really need motion controls at all. Like swimming, for example. Why did you need to use motion controls for that? You could have very easily used a control stick. And I think this is the biggest problem with Skyward Sword, to be honest. They went in with the thinking that, right, we need a big game to showcase Motion Plus. Let's make it a Zelda game. And yes, granted, the controls work great some of the time. But for the rest of the time, it's a very frustrating experience. And it honestly drew me out of the game somewhat. My other complaints about the gameplay of Skyward Sword is that some of it feels a lot like filler, and uh, nowhere is this more apparent than the Silent Realms. By God, is that an exercise in frustration. Now, I'm all for challenge, but I also like challenge to be fairly meted out, if you know what I'm saying. Having to collect all these things within a time limit, fine having to do it while being chased by enemies. Fine. Getting hit once and then having to repeat something which takes about three minutes at a time. Not fine. Okay? That's called being unfair. And it only serves to pad out the game longer than it needs to be. And while I enjoyed having to do the stuff to get into the dungeons and whatnot, by the end of the game I was just like, you know what? I've had to do so much shit to prove I'm the hero. Can you just like let me in? to the Triforce dungeon already. I'm pretty sure I can take down Girahim as is right now. Usually this is the point where I'd like bring up the side quests and whatnot, but they weren't all that great either. From what I played, they were mostly fetch quests, and I don't know why it is that Nintendo have never been able to create decent side quests outside of Majora's Mask. I'm not saying all the others were crap, mind you, but they were best in Majora's Mask. But I just really didn't get into the side quest of Skyward Sword at all. 
No, yeah, I'm being a bit over negative here, but I tell you what I did enjoy, gameplay wise, in Skyward Sword the upgrade system. I loved how you could take all the different items you found throughout your adventure and craft them into shields and upgrades for your items. That's great, because when you can like upgrade your item outside of a dungeon, it leaves room in uh, Link's arsenal for new, more interesting items to be found to, to be used throughout the dungeons and whatnot. That's a great idea. Same goes for potions, you know, finding bugs, mixing them together to create stronger potions. That's fantastic. But again, inconsistency. For all the good it does, it lets itself down. Why is it when you create, say, the top tier shield, uh, I believe the top tier wooden shield is called the banded shield, feel free to correct me on that, that you can't simply buy the banded shield again if it breaks? No, of course not. You have to go and spend ages getting all the ingredients you need to upgrade the one shield twice again. That's not fun. It's just filler. Make the shield really expensive if you want. I don't care. Collecting rupees is not a problem. You know, we've become accustomed to doing that in a Zelda game. But grinding for items is one thing I'd never thought I'd have to do in a Zelda game. And it's fine doing it the first time around to get the shield. Not so much the second time. Last couple of things I want to mention before we move on to the conclusion is the shield and stamina gauges. Now, I can appreciate them being there. I'm sure Nintendo wanted to add a bit of depth to the gameplay and whatnot. And in the case of the shield meter, I think it works for the most part. Adds a little bit of a layer of strategy to the game. You know, don't be too hasty with your shield bashes and whatnot. Time them correctly, otherwise you'll end up losing your shield. And at first that was quite interesting, but when it happened during the middle of a boss fight, and I had no way to defend myself, it just got more annoying than anything really. And then I got the Hydean shield and I never had to worry about that again. The stamina gauge on the other hand only seems to function as a way to stop you from overusing the spin attack and also from running everywhere or rolling everywhere and honestly I can't see a reason for it. I mean maybe they wanted more focus on finesse rather than spinning like a maniac all the time and I can understand that but much like the shield meter it's something that's interesting at first, but becomes annoying when it's actually put into practice. And the frustrating thing is, while you can actually upgrade the shield meter as you upgrade your shields, the stamina gauge never gets an upgrade, so you're constantly stuck with the same amount of stamina. I know there's a potion that can give you more stamina temporarily, but you'd think if there was a way to upgrade your shields, your potions and everything else, that you could upgrade yourself physically. I think that would have added a lot more depth than running a bit, getting tired and not being able to do anything for a few seconds. So in conclusion, my biggest problem with Skyward Sword is not so much that it's a bad game per se, but that it's very inconsistent. For everything that's good about it, there's something as equally bad about it as well. The story is very charming, but it's padded out with filler. The music is great but there's not that many memorable themes in the soundtrack. The gameplay is fun when the controls are working. In that sense, it's just very inconsistent, and in that regard, I'd only really recommend Skyward Sword if, one, you really, really need to play a Zelda game, and two, if you don't really have that many Wii games in your collection, because let's be honest, besides Skyward Sword and The Last Story, ain't much else coming out for the Wii. You know, they've kind of moved all their resources over to the Wii U at this point. But if you were to ask me if I hated Skyward Sword, no, not really. And I had a lot of fun with the game. Just not as much as I did with, say, Majora's Mask or Link's Awakening. Thanks for listening. See you all on the next playthrough. Bye bye for now.